and that really helps loosen things up. And so you're both talking really <clears throat> about sort of community education and mm -hmm. informing your peers about the issues, which is fantastic, and thank you for doing that work. But it's a little different from what you've done, Samir, which is actually to organize folks to try to get young people to try to get them to vote. What were some challenges of trying to get young people to vote? Well, and I mean, there's I think there's a lot of challenges. One of them might be that they're always transient, and they they always move from place to place. And if you if you want to vote, you know, like sometimes you need to re-register to vote if you move to a different location, and they're not really informed about that. And um, I I think that maybe like young people, unless the the thing is like even if they're born in extreme poverty, or let's say they're born in like a really bad neighborhood or something like that, and then they're going to be like, well, I don't want to participate in the election. All I've heard my whole life is like people saying we we don't trust our elected leaders, and I've come from this bad background. I don't care what they think, and I'm just you know going to do my thing. And then and then you might have people who might. Um, just they just might be living their lives regular or whatever, and they might like this doesn't matter to me. Whatever they do, it's not going to affect my everyday life. So it's hard. I think those people they may not have the economic struggles, but they just may not think that it that that it's important to them. They don't see how it applies. So, to so I think there's there's two areas that I found like the two problems like that, and and you and but in fact I, I think that those are the problems. But I think if you come at them with you have to be really enthusiastic first off. Because I think that that obviously is contagious. I'm sure, as everyone notice, knows, and 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 you really have to come at it with an angle like, yes, it does matter to you. And so, and, what tactics did you try that worked then, when you were trying to mobilize young people or turn out the vote for young people? Turn out like well, when 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 I'd go doorbelling, for example, like I I talked to this girl like in her I think she was like in her mid twenties, and she was I, I asked her to come out and vote for the for the Democrats and. And she was saying that um, no, it it doesn't really matter, and I I don't really care. I don't want to do this because every year, you know, if I vote, that they're not gonna they're not gonna do anything anyway. But I'm like, well, you know, um, one of the things is that you know I understand you're in this this bad situation, and 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 like you you know you want people to help you with with like education, healthcare, and and things like that. You'd really like them to help you, but as a matter of fact, some of the bills that they pass in the Senate actually do affect you. And and another thing is if you don't vote at all, then that's going to be a reason why elected officials whether you like it or not, they may not pay attention to your community if you don't vote. So it's like you really need to just go out and vote and, and express your voice. It doesn't matter which candidate you necessarily vote for, but you should vote. It's kind so, of a vicious cycle because um, people don't vote because they don't feel like they're being represented, but elected officials definitely do not pay attention yeah. to people who don't vote. Their job year after year is to get reelected. And yeah. for good or for bad, for whatever you want to think about that, they want to get reelected at the end of their term. And so they pay attention to the voters. And so I mean, I guess in my perspective, it is important for people to vote. But what, um, what, what do you, what are your peers saying? Do they think that elections make a difference? Um, I believe overall they do. Though a lot of them feel that we're in a blue state, so if they don't vote, it doesn't matter as much. But they like to be part of the process. I think the people I hang out with tend to be more politically active and tend to favor it more, though. So is. Is political activism or just sort of being involved, is that a norm on your campus or is that does that stand um, out as being unique or different? No, it's not very different. There's definitely a decent sized population and more people than I, would, I had originally expected are at least politically aware, though not everyone's involved. They just, they have feelings one way or the other. Marissa, you got involved with, Na well, in fact, you're still not old enough to vote. No. <laughs> you became involved with NARAL when you were, what, 14? Uh -huh. What inspired you or what motivated you to get involved with an organization that is so specifically focused on elections and politics and legislation? Well, because elections and politics and legislation directly affect me. And even though I can't vote for um, my leaders, um, the fact that I can express my voice and my opinions really it resonates with them. Um, I've been to Olympia lobbying for different bills as a constituent and they're really impressed that the youth is they are out there um, showing their voice and having their voice be heard um, and so that really makes just about as much as a difference as a vote would. What are some tools or what are some ways that participating in um, things like lobby days or or just in NARAL, what are ways that that was made accessible to you? Because I think if 
if it's difficult for youth to access, then they're probably not going to. So what are ways that it was you were given access to this process? Um, well, I found, I mean, I found out um, about NARAL just through the internet. Um, when I went to D.C. for the March for Women's Lives, I signed up for different newsletters and things like that. And that's really what got me started in the whole political um, arena. That's a really interesting point to make because in the 1970s we didn't have the internet. Yeah. And I think just from my perspective as an organizer at NARAL, while I do see people in the office every day, I see people at lobby days, at all the big events, rallies and so forth, I also see a lot of youth activism happening over the internet. So um, like you said, you heard about NARAL on the internet yeah. and when we send out alerts uh, to our supporters and say, hey, contact your legislator about X, Y, and Z issue, we'll find that a lot of people will contact legislators via email. And I think that is maybe part of the reason why second wave feminists are not seeing the young people. It's not that they're not engaging in activism, it's just that they're engaging in activism in a way that is less visible on the streets. Would you, does that seem to be the case with you guys? Are there other ways that you guys engage in activism over the internet? Um, you know, I, I really, I, I really don't engage in much activism over the internet. Kind of, I guess, kind of, my perspective is that. I mean, people will like definitely like, check their email if you send them an alert and stuff. Mm -hmm. And and but sometimes I think that there's people. People can be also be lazy, and they'll be like, if you're really maybe like us, we'll be like, yeah, we're gonna yeah. definitely gonna read this whole email and we're gonna go to the thing. But then I have some. I know some people who I'd consider to be on the fringe. Like you really have to drag them out, and 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 so maybe even calling them is a is a good way to reach them. And um, just just one point I wanted to make mm -hmm. on the other on the other issue you're talking about about. Do, do elections make a difference? And I have a lot of friends who I talk to who say, no, it doesn't matter if you vote for a Democrat or a Republican. It's not going to affect my life. I mean, they're really idealists, yeah. and they want to uproot it. And, and so while I argue with them, I'm like, no, it's, you know, it's just not going to happen that way. I mean, it, we're not going to be able to just create a revolution. But I think I do find that friends like that, if they go out with nonprofit organizations outside of maybe government, like NARAL or like a, a group that helps youth, if we start up these little local things, um, that, that show that, that we can do, we can make a little difference on a small level. I think we can take those people who don't believe that politics makes a difference, but still get them um, active on the issues. Well, I guess that's a way that your generation, or more broadly our generation, <laughs> I'm a little bit older than you guys, um, but where we do have a similarity in the 1970s, you're all talking, I mean, there is the internet, which did mm -hmm. not exist then, and so activism can look very, very different. But you guys are talking about peer-to-peer -peer contact. Mm -hmm. And although it might be more private one-on-one -on -one contact, or you know, making a phone call, like you said, or having a group meeting with some other teenagers, back in the 70s, they did a lot of um, consciousness-raising groups or consciousness-raising circles. So they would get a lot of people together at, for a house party, so to speak, and talk about the issues. And so clearly, that was something that that worked, and I guess that's a legacy that they we've learned from them is that peer-to-peer -peer form of contact. Um, are there issues where you have where you feel it's very critical that youth are voicing their opinions, or where youth are engaging in activism? Um, for me, sex education is a huge one. I mean, really, that teen that affects teenagers directly, and really only teenagers. And so, in order for an accurate representation of um, those being affected to come out, the teen um, youth and teenagers need to voice that. Um, and Have I've, you seen youth being involved in advocating, uh, you're talking about advocating for comprehensive mm -hmm. and medically accurate sex yeah. ed. Have, have you seen your peers doing that? Um, it's, it was a little tougher in my school because like I've tried to start um, Plan B information being circled around, but it was once again considered Plan too B is emergency contraception. Oh yeah, yeah. emergency yeah, yeah. contraception. Sorry, um, it was considered too controversial. Um, my principal actually wasn't informed correctly about what it was, um, and so it's a little more difficult. But there are people out there, um, people that I know directly, that are very active in sex education kinds of things. How about you're nodding, Heather? I also think, uh, in addition to sex education, is access to um, like reproductive issues, like and access to contraceptives has been very important for youth to act um, to be active around and to lobby for and to fight for because a lot of youth don't have the money that you have when you're a little bit older and established, and we really depend on like Planned Parenthood programs that really help us get cheaper contraceptive. And I know that it's been very, very helpful for many people my age.